Kia ora Year 12, this is a question for, for Josh from the November 2015 paper and it's a really good iterative methods question. It feels to me like it's ages and ages since we looked at these. I think it was before lockdown or maybe at the very start of lockdown. They're really easy as long as you remember a few of the basic ideas. So this question here is a good example. First we're given an equation and we're told that it's got one real root and that's denoted by alpha. To start with we have to find roughly where that root is. So we're looking for the pair of consecutive integers between which alpha lies. Then we have to show that we've got this formula here. We have to show that this is going to converge to give me the right answer. And then we have to go ahead and find the value of alpha. And that's always going to be an approximate answer. Um, this last bit is really, really boring. OK, so let's first of all think about what it means for a cubic to have one real root. So here's my xy coordinates and it's a cubic so it's going to have this shape because it's a positive cubic and if it's got one real root then maybe it looks something like this okay so it doesn't really matter um, but what we're noticing is that this root here has got values on either side right so what I'm looking for is to find an integer value here where it's negative and an integer value here where the value, the y value, is positive. So what we're going to use is a lot like when we do factor and remainder theorem things. We're just going to use guess and check. We're going to call the polynomial p of x is x cubed minus x squared minus 6. And then we're going to substitute in values. Now I'm just going to start by chucking in x equals 1, and I get 1 minus 1 minus 6, which is negative 6. I'm going to try p of 2, and hopefully I'm going to get closer to a positive number. So we've got 8 minus 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. So it looks like I'm getting closer to where the root is. And then let's try p of 3. So when x is 3, I've got 27 minus 9 minus 6, which gives me, what's that, uh, 12. So you can see that there's a change of sign. So we don't have to call it p, we could call it f of x, so, but we'll stick with our p. So since p of 2 is negative and p of 3 is positive, alpha must lie somewhere in between. So my next job is to figure out a formula to estimate that. What we've got to do is take the formula they've given us and show that it's going to converge to give us alpha. In other words, we want to rearrange this and show that it um, ends up with this. So we can say something like this. If it converges, then x n plus 1 has got to be roughly the same as x n. So we can call that converging value um, x. So we've got x is equal to x plus 6 over x. Right, so what have I done there? Well, my formula has got x n plus 1 on this side, and I've got x n here and x n here. So this is my starting point, and this is my updated value. And then we go round and round. And hopefully they get closer and closer together. So if it's going to converge, then those two numbers are the same thing. So this equation here must be true. What we have to do now is just rearrange. So let's start by squaring both sides. We get x squared is equal to x plus 6 over x. My goal is to show that I get back to that cubic at the start. So let's get a common denominator here. Now we're going to multiply both sides by x. And we'll get x cubed is equal to x squared plus 6 or x cubed minus x squared plus 6 equals 0. And the root of this equation is alpha. Right? And we can read that, go back to the question to read that detail there. right? So look right back at the start of the question. We were told that that cubic has got one real root, and the root is alpha. Now the last thing we've got to do is to use this formula to determine alpha correct to three decimal places, but we have to give the result of each iteration to five. 
So let's do a table. Now, this is boring, but it's a really easy place to show that you know what you're doing. Um, so we'll start with xn here. And here we've got x to the n plus 1. So it's this. So let's start with 2 and put it in and see what we get. Well, we get 2.23607. Then we put that in as my updated value. And what I've got to do is keep going until I'm converging to three decimal places. So out comes 2.21796. Oops, 2.17, that's not, hang on, what have I done wrong? 2.21796 there, and then here I get 2.21882, 2.21882 is my new number going in, and out comes, and you can see we're getting really, really close here. We've got to go till we've got three decimal places. So we're just about there, that's 2.219, that's 2.219, that's 2.218. So we just want to be careful, maybe do one more. You can see that we've gone far enough now. So it converges to the value 2.219 to 3dp. Okay, so that's kind of a classic iterative methods problem. There are heaps of those in the past papers um, with a few slight variations. I'm just going to show you one variation now. Usually in the A-level questions, they want you to show that a formula like this one here goes back to this one here. But we could also have started with the equation and worked out that formula for ourselves. So if we had x cubed minus x squared minus 6 equals 0. We could have done this. x cubed is equal to x squared plus 6. And now we could um, cube root both sides. So x is equal to the cube root of x squared plus 6. So we could use this as an updating rule. And then we could go and explore whether this one converges or not, because they won't always converge. Now we talked about that a bit in class, I'm going to talk about that again a bit more in class when we start doing revision. Okay, so that's this question done. Um, Josh had another request which I will probably do in a few minutes. That's question 10 from the same paper. Thanks for watching, leave me any comments if there are any mistakes or questions.